I've been using cursor background agents for several weeks, and I wanted to share with you my honest opinion about it for a while. Somehow, I missed the topic and created several other videos, but yesterday Cursor released another update that is related to background agents. So I decided to share with you three insights I wish someone had told me earlier. But before we dive in, let's clarify what exactly is a Cursor background agent. It's a cloud-based agent that runs async in an isolated environment, allowing AI to handle code-related tasks such as editing, testing, and committing changes directly to GitHub. You can trigger the agent from several places, from Cursor IDE, Cursor Web, and via Slack. We'll start with Cursor IDE, so let's set up it first. Inside Cursor settings, we need to change the privacy mode, which is not the legacy one. As we mentioned, the background agent is running on a separate VM, so it needs to copy your code in order to execute the task. Now we need to connect a GitHub account. It will require read and write permissions. You can choose which repositories it will have access to. That's it. Let's go to the chat and choose background agent and trigger it. After the task is executed, you can choose between create a pull request or merging it directly. Of course, I recommend to create a pull request for your review. Another way to use the background agent is via Cursor website. After the initial setup, you can go to the Cursor website. Under the agents page, you can trigger another background agent, like you can see here. And it doesn't stop there, you can run multiple LLMs on the same prompt and compare the results. Background agents can be triggered via Slack as well, you'll need to mention Cursor just like a team member. What about the pricing? Background agents are available in Pro and Ultra plans. Pro costs 20 bucks a month while Ultra is 200 bucks. You can have 20% discount if you pay yearly, but I don't recommend it. The AI tools for developers evolve so fast, so who knows how relevant Cursor will be in a year from now. In addition to that, you will need to set an extra usage limit. You are starting with the plan usage, and only after you are running out, you'll move to the usage base budget. When running a background agent, you must use the max model, which means two things. First, it will provide a larger context for the LLM, and second, it will cost additional 20% charge for each prompt. You can use any max model you prefer. If you find this video valuable, hit the like and subscribe to our channel. This helps me provide more value for you. Alright, let's dive into the insight I've gathered. The first one is don't overuse background agents. They tend to be more expensive than running tasks directly through the IDE. Personally, I use Cursor daily with the prop plan and it often hits the usage limit even without background agents. This brings me to the next insight, which tasks are best suited for background agents. In my experience, they work best when given a clear, well scoped task, ideally something that can be wrapped up with a small pull request. Think of GitHub issue with a detailed context, routine maintenance like upgrading dependencies, or tasks that can take time to execute but don't require your, your active input, letting you continue working with the IDE uninterrupted. My third insight is always generate a pull request at the end of the task. Review the code carefully before merging, even smart agents can hallucinate. Background agents are a great tool to be more productive with Cursor. But if you want to be even more productive, I've collected 23 pro tips that will take you to the next level.